Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ama ba' Continuing on in our lessons in fiqh, basic fiqh We read the hadith Of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Which shows us That we should not be wasteful with water so the Muslim is ordered to be not wasteful and not wasteful in anything, whether it be food or water, but especially this hadith is the leo for us that we should be uh, careful with our water when making wudu and when uh, we should not be wasteful. On Abi Jafar Muhammad ibn Ali ibn ابن حسين ابن علي بن أبي طالب رضي الله تعالى عنهم أنه كان هو وأبوه عند جابر بن عبد الله وعنده قوم فسألوه عن الغسل فقال يكفيك ساعة فقال الرجل ما يكفيني فقال جابر كان يكفي من هو أوفر منك شعر وخير منك يريد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ثم أمنا في ثوب رواه بخاري وفي اللفظ كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يفرغ الماء على رأسه ثلاثا رواه بخاري In this hadith of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم The hadith narrated on, on Abi Jafar Muhammad Ibn Ali Ibn Hussein Ibn uh, Ibn uh, Ibn Ali Ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhum he said that he was uh, he was with his father uh, with Jabir Ibn Abdullah they were visiting Jabir Ibn Abdullah and as the tabi'een uh, used to do and the sahaba would visit one another seeking knowledge and this shows us the importance of seeking knowledge so he was there to ask a question regarding the uh, ghusl so he was trying to increase his knowledge what was the ghusl like what how did the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam make ghusl and, and and how much water did he use and so forth this was it shows us how the sahaba and the tabi'een were was seeking knowledge and wanting to know and practice islam in a manner that suits that that pleases allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so they were visiting jabir ibn abdullah and with him was a group of people there was a group of people with jabir radiallahu ta'ala and they asked him about the ghusl and he said it's sufficient a sa'a and the sa'a it's it's not clear how much he's actually referring to how much we would uh how much in our time we would refer to us as a sa'un a nabawiyah but it wasn't very much water anyhow a very very little bit of water okay and he said it's sufficient for you a sa'un so then a man stood up and he said that's not sufficient for me so Jabir, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he, he said, it used to be sufficient for the one whose hair was even thicker and longer than yours, and better than you. And he meant by that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in another narration, it was narrated that the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to uh, take water and wash his head uh, three times this is during the ghusl in this hadith of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam <coughs> there are many benefits and some of the benefits that the ulama deduce from this hadith one of them is that it's an obligation to wash oneself when they're junub you know from janaba And this is done by 
taking water and having it all over your limbs, you know, washing all of your limbs. And another benefit from this hadith is that in a very important book, which is a Maliki book, I believe, in, or, or a uh, Shafi'i book, a very famous book uh, by Ibn Rushd, Bidai to Mujtahid. He mentioned, he said, this hadith is not evidence that a person must take water and, you know, wipe and massage the water through his body or his hair. He said, he said it's not evidence for that, nor is it evidence against that. Because some require that you should, when making a ghusl, that you should wipe while you're showering. And some say, no, it's sufficient that water touches those things. So you could just jump in the sea, or you could sit under a, a shower head and let the water touch all, all of your body parts. And of course, as some of the ulama say, with by washing out the nose and the mouth as well, and the private parts, and all the rest of your body. So that it will be sufficient by just running under a shower, getting under a shower, and cleaning out the mouth and the nose. So the, the ulama, they, they differ over that. Uh, some, the ulama, they say that the amount is, I think, about four palmfuls of water. That if you have water in your, your palms, then that is, uh, or, or in four uh, singular palmfuls, I believe, or possibly it could be uh, together, that that is what was sufficient. That the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, did not use a lot of water. And he used that much to make his ghusl sometimes. Alayhi salatu wasalam. So that shows us also to not be wasteful of water. We use gallons of water sometimes in taking one single shower. Sitting under there and wasting and, and the people are wasteful in their wudu. But this hadith shows for us to not illustrate for us that we don't need to be excessive in the use of water. We need to use what is sufficient for us. Another benefit of this hadith and this is, as I was just saying, is that it is recommended to be, not be wasteful with the water. It's recommended, actually it's haram to be wasteful, but it is recommended to be, uh, to, to make takhfif. To make takhfif, to be light with the water, not, <coughs> not excessive with the water during tahara. Another benefit of this hadith is also it illustrates for us the importance of enkar ala mukhalif that it is from Islam that when someone is differing with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam going against the Dalil whether they have just made a mistake or they are a person of innovation and they've fallen into bid'ah or what have you that we must uh, we must correct them and we and there's various ways uh, various different ways to correct Sometimes it is it is with harshness. Sometimes that is what a person needs, depending on the sin or the bid'ah or whatever they've fallen into. And sometimes, the, most of the time, it is better to correct with kindness and gentleness in order that the people would accept it and be open to the correction. But this shows us that sometimes there's a time for gentleness and sometimes there's a time for uh, more shidda, more sternness. And that just depends upon the situation. It also illustrates for us the fiqh that we have to have, that, that a person should have knowledge of their religion, and, and, and if they're favored with hikmah and wisdom, then they know how to put everything in its rightful place. They know that sometimes it may take more sternness. Sometimes it may take more gentleness when correcting an individual. So that comes from fiqh, from understanding the religion, and, and thinking about and understanding individuals and the people that you're giving da'wah to, how that they're, they're going to ra react and what's going to be best to correct their behavior without either without causing harm. And all this, as many of the things in Islam, they are built on the maslaha and the mafsada, meaning the benefits and the harms of doing things. Another benefit of this hadith, it shows us the harfs or the, the encouragement of the salaf, how the salaf were very encouraged 
to know and understand the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and how to practice the religion and how to use water even. So much so that even how much water was sufficient. And we see that also from this hadith is that it's permissible to use shidda sometimes as we just mentioned that sometimes because Jabir Ibn Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he, he had a stern response he was upset he's like he said radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that this was sufficient this was a sufficient amount for someone who was better than you and who had longer and thicker hair than you and he meant by that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam letting us know that sometimes it takes a stern voice and a stern stance in order to correct someone. Sometimes it, you, you have to, again, have fiqh fideen to kind of understand what is best. Maybe you see some youth. Even recently I saw, I went to a barbershop, a Muslim barbershop, and the youth were not from, originally from here, but they were an, from an immigrant community, and may Allah preserve them and guide them. But I saw how all the youth, their pants were sagging. They had weed out in the, in the barbershop, they were cursing like sailors, swearing and cursing more than I ever cursed before Islam. Cussing and, and proving themselves in front of non-Muslims. And in fact, that was a hujja against them that they were, they were not calling him to an Islam. Matter of fact, they illustrated no habits of the Muslim. Cursing loud and belligerent. Talking about what they did at the party last night and the women and this and that and the other. So I knew that it was necessary for me to enjoy the right and forbid the evil but I did it with gentleness and I found that it was a positive response. But sometimes it may require shidda and it shows us that the madhab of the salaf has both at times when necessary and this comes from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that sometimes it takes sternness and sometimes it takes gentleness and mostly gentleness will get you <coughs> a lot further than sternness. So we should apply more gentleness than sternness. And there's many hadith of, uh, hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that illustrate that for us. And at times, there's also shidda, which is also from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah ﷺ, in order to make the point to be stern and get the point across. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct is from Allah. Anything I said that was incorrect is from myself and the shaitan. And may Allah bless us with al nafi or rizqan tayyib wa amal al and forgive us of our sins. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.